We will now learn a little more about the deployment and debugging support that Visual Studio provides for us when we're creating SharePoint solutions. And along the way, we'll learn a little more about application pages and we'll take the opportunity to work with some specific types of object in the SharePoint object hierarchy called alerts. And alerts are the mechanism by which an information worker is notified when an item has changed, for example. So we'll create an empty SharePoint project and we'll call it Alerter. And we'll deploy it as a full trust solution because we're going to add an application page. So our project is created and we'll go ahead and add a new item. And we'll choose application page and call it alerts. So this application page will be deployed to the layouts folder or indeed a subfolder of that as we covered in a previous video. Visual Studio creates the the alerts folder structure underneath layouts and opens our application page for us. So we can see layouts alerter which is our solution folder and then alerts.aspx. So now we can start building up our application page and we have a content placeholder called placeholder main where we can add ASP.NET controls. We have a few other placeholders as well and we'll simply start with a label and I'll change the ID of the label to alert count. So at some point we'll write some code to populate the text of that label to inform us of how many alerts are active in the site. We'll add a line break and we'll add a button. And our button is going to enable us to enable all alerts in the site. So we'll provide an ID of a suitable name and we'll provide a text value of enable all alerts. We'll also provide the onClick method and so we'll, we'll see in a few seconds how to write a server-side event that fires for a button on, a, on an application page. We'll call the onClick event enable all. We'll add another button and this button will disable all events so it will do the opposite of the, the previous button we, we created so we'll call it disable all and provide a suitable text value for the, the button's display text. And again we'll write an on-click event handler for this in a, in a few seconds time so we'll, we'll wire it up now. I'll save the page and then we can go and view the code. So we have a page load event wired for us and I need to write my event handlers for the click of both of those buttons. So we'll start off with the enable all event and we'll provide the suitable event signature for the click of a button which is fairly simple. We, we need an object parameter and an event args parameter. Now the click of the second button has a very similar uh, in fact identical event signature so we can copy and paste and just rename the the procedure. Let's make sure we put those up correctly so they're with a uh, uppercase E and D. Now in the page load event we can start interacting with the SharePoint object model. So I'm going to create a using block where we instantiate an SP web object. Now in previous demonstrations we always as we when we'd finished working with an SP web object we explicitly called dispose but in um, the, an alternative is to use a using block as we're doing here so the .NET framework will automatically dispose of our objects when they run out of scope outside of the using block. Now inside my using block we have access to alerts collection of the SP web object and we'll very simply retrieve its count property, convert it to a string and set that to the, the text value of our label which was called alert count. We can also concatenate our own display message there as well so we'll provide some suitable text.
Now, when we have our code running in response to the click of the buttons, we also want to instantiate an SP web object. And again, I'll use a, a using structure to ensure that we don't leave any errant references to the underlying com object. So that's really a very simple way of, of ensuring that. Now we can then iterate through the alerts collection of the SP web object and retri start retrieving properties of each alert. So alerts have statuses such as on or off, whether they're enabled or disabled. And in the enable all, we're very simply iterating through the collection and setting the status to on and calling alert.update. The disable all does a very similar task, except this time it sets the uh, alert status to off. And these are enumerated types, as you can see, SP alert status dot on and dot off. So let's deploy and test our code. Now, in the page load event, we want to Now in the page load event, we also want to now display the number of enabled alerts and the number of disabled alerts so that we know when we've clicked our button whether they are enabled or disabled appropriately. So we'll provide two class level variables of type integer and then we will iterate through the alert the, well, the alerts collection of the SP web object and retrieve their status this time. So rather than setting their status as we did in the click of the buttons, we'll simply read them so that we can document them in the user interface. So we can provide a very simple if structure that says if alert dot status is SP alert status, the enumerated type dot on. Well, we can increment the value of enabled. And we have some very similar code in uh, for determining whether the uh, alert is currently disabled. So we'll again retrieve its status and increment the value of the disabled integer. We can now modify our message to show us of all of the alerts in the sites how many are enabled and how many are disabled. So we'll do that very simply now by including the value of those integers that we've just populated and concatenate them with our, our message. So when this code runs we'll effectively have a label that says enabled alerts and then a number and then disabled alerts and another number. And that way we'll be able to verify that our code for enabling or disabling actually works. Now it's time really to concentrate on the deployment and debugging process that Visual Studio allows. So I've added a breakpoint and that's on the page load. So as the page loads, we break straight into Visual Studio and we can start stepping through the code that we've written. So it's as simple as that. Um, we can just press F5, in fact, and visit the page and the debugger will attach automatically. So this is a great improvement over previous versions of Visual Studio. And there we can see our code has, has actually run.